Okay, for this first trig lesson, we're going to take a look at angles in standard position, which we call rotation angles. In trigonometry, angles are often interpreted as rotations of a ray. The starting position and the final position of the ray are going to be called the initial arm and the terminal arm, which we can see over here, the initial arm and the terminal arm. Working with angles and triangles limits the measures of the angles to less than 180 degrees because we can only go up to 180 degrees for any triangle. If angles are drawn in standard position, we can consider any angles of any measures. So the first, group A, we have in standard position. The second in group B are not in standard position. Well, what's the difference between the two? Well, if I take a look at group A or group B, for group A, the initial arm is always along the x-axis and the vertex occurs at the origin. We can see this in all these cases where I have my initial arm is always along this x-axis and I can see that the vertex where the angle occurs always has a point at the origin where the initial arm and the terminal arm are going to meet. So that's my rules for angles in standard position. The vertex is always going to be at the origin or point zero zero and the initial arm always al lies along the positive x-axis so it starts at the origin and then heads towards the positive x-axis. If the angle is going counterclockwise, it's going to be positive. If it is going clockwise, it is going to be considered a negative angle, which means that this would be a positive angle and this would be a negative angle. So for each of these, what we're going to do is we're going to sketch each angle in standard position and state the quadrant in which the terminal arm lies. Remembering that for my quadrants, I start in the top right, and this would be quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. So I'm going to draw my initial arm running along that positive x-axis, and then 120 is going to be up along here, a little ways past 90. That's going to be my angle, and this obviously is in quadrant 2. For 220, I'm going to draw my starting position. Then I'm going to rotate it a little past 180, or in between 180 and 270. Here's my angle, and it finishes in quadrant 3. If I'm going negative 320, then I'm going to start to the right, and then it's going to work in the opposite direction. This would be negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, which means that it's going to finish in here and rotate in this direction. And this finishes in quadrant 1. A reference angle is always going to be the angle between the terminal arm and the closest x-axis. x-axis being the key term. Make sure you're not going towards the y-axis. It always has to be the x-axis. This is always going to be a positive value, and it is always going to be between 0 and 90 degrees every single time. So. If I'm determining the reference angle for each of these, well, I'm going to say that I'm going to start by drawing what this would look like. And I know that this angle in here is going to be 150 degrees. 
the closest x-axis from the terminal arm is going to be along here, which means that I'm figuring out what is the difference between that 150 and the closest x-axis, which occurs at 180 degrees. And in this case, my reference angle is going to be 30 degrees in here. For example, B, I'm going to state that this is what my angle looks like. All the way around here would be 230 degrees. And for my terminal arm, I'm going to have to head back to 180 to get to my nearest x-axis, which means that the closest one is going to be 50 less than the 230 for the full rotation, or my reference angle is going to equal 50 degrees. For example 3, or example C, sorry, I'm going to go negative 125, which is going to head down in this direction. And the closest x-axis is going to be at negative 180 degrees. To get from negative 125 to negative 180, this is going to have to be 55 degrees. And for example D, I have my angle of negative 70 degrees and the closest x-axis is actually going to be where I started so to get back to zero I would have to rotate 70 degrees or my reference angle is going to be 70 degrees. If I'm listing all the angles that have a reference angle of 45 from 0 degrees all the way to 360 degrees, then I need to account for every possible angle that has a reference angle of 45 degrees in all four quadrants. I'm going to have the first one and quadrant one where I can see that my reference angle is going to be the same as my actual angle of 45 degrees. I'm going to have a second one in quadrant 2 where I have my reference angle of 45 degrees which means that it's going to be 45 degrees less than 180 or the rotation angle is going to be 135 degrees. I'm going to have another possibility in quadrant 3 where it's going to be 45 degrees more than the 180 and this would give me a rotation angle of 225 degrees and I'm going to have my last possibility where it rotates all the way to quadrant 4 rotating all the way around here And that's going to be 45 degrees less than hitting that full 360, which means that this would take me to 315 degrees. So I can state that in quadrant one, it's going to be 
45 degrees. In quadrant two, my angle is going to be 135 degrees. In quadrant three, my angle is 225 degrees. And in quadrant four, my angle was 315 degrees.